Hello, Jahangir Hussain. Are you with us? Uh, yes, yes. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. How are you? Very well, thank you. And uh, I would like to take this opportunity to thank you for um, moderating one of the sessions with us. Um, that uh, will thank be you. It's my very... pleasure. And thank you very much and for selecting me as moderator. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Thank and you. And how are you, Rina? Rina ji? All well, all well. Good yeah, to see right. you. You are evergreen and always well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so we have a couple of minutes um, before um, Victoria uh, lets all the participants in. Um, uh, Jahangir, we were just talking about the structure and um, after I will do an introduction and um, Mian Atik um, uh, Ahmed will do um, the keynote speech of 20 minutes and then we will have the breakout rooms um, yes. and there will be maybe three of them depending on the number of participants and you will uh, moderate one which just means keeping everybody to time if possible and um, then when we go back into the big uh, group you will uh, just say what what everybody was talking about and feedback their content and then America will do the other breakout room and I will do the third one if we have three um, and then we will have um, the second discussion. So the first breakout rooms will be about um, capacity building and museology in the region. And the second one will be about funding. Uh, but I will announce those before we go into the breakout room so that people will know what the theme of the discussion is about. Um, and what we want is to get uh, people's ideas of what has worked or what hasn't worked or their situation so that we can start to discuss as a Okay, I think we're going to let everybody in now. Okay, Lizzie, so I will admit them all, okay? Okay, carry on, Lizzie. Yes, please. Yeah. Here we are. So we're, we're starting now. Some participants are trying to join. Yes, we're, yes, we've now opened up and everybody is joining. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone, and uh, good evening for some of you um, in uh, all the countries of South Asia. Um, thank you very much for joining this uh, Directors Forum, which brings together all the museum leaders um, in Nepal, Bangladesh, India, uh, Pakistan and Sri Lanka. So we are really honoured to have you all here spending your time um, with us to discuss common issues that you face in your region. Um, we are also very grateful to Fundacion Tipa, in Argentina, led very, um, very, very um, effectively by Américo Castilla, um, who is our partner in this project. Um, Fundación Tipa have been very good at looking at capacity building, particularly at leadership level. So this uh, program is uh, part of an ICOM program through Intercom, which is the uh, museum management subcommittee of ICOM to look at what museum leaders all over the world are facing. Two years ago, we carried out some research amongst museum leaders all over the world to look at regional differences in what museum leaders are facing in their different regions. Um, that resulted in a report which is Problem on the Intercom website. And um, we then followed that up with a second round of funding from ICOM to create directors forums in region, four regions of the world, Latin America, Africa, Southeast Europe, and here we are, South Asia. With the idea of getting museum directors together to talk about the issues together, which creates a collective voice for them and, and support between museum directors. So that is what we wanted, uh, wanted most, um, uh, most to do. Uh, 
Um, I would like to thank our South Asia partner, uh, Rina Diwan from the Kolkata Center for Creativity for um, really helping um, to um, create this group that we now have, uh, that, we, that we now are here today. Um, we also set up an advisory board of esteemed museum leaders. Um, we have Jahangir Hussein from Bangladesh, Shahi Bijaya from Nepal, Professor Anura Manatunga from Sri Lanka, and Mohammed Akhtar Javed was from Pakistan. Um, those were the um, advisory group members who helped us to make sure that this director's forum is relevant to the situation of museum directors in South Asia. And we are very honored to have with us um, Mian Atik Ahmad, who is the keynote speaker for today. He is the Secretary General of the Museums Association <coughs> of Pakistan and Director of the Galapur um, Museum, which, um, and he is credited with bringing the museum um, back to life um, by mobilizing resources and enhancing the collections. So he is a very good example of what can be done with leadership. Um, so we will hear from, hear from him um, in a minute on two themes, um, well, three themes, museology and capacity building and funding. Um, so um, uh, Mian Atik Ahmad will speak for 20 minutes on those themes. And then we will have the chance to go into smaller chat rooms in this format. Um, which will be moderated by uh, Americo will uh, will moderate one room, I will moderate the other, and Jahangir Hussein will moderate the third room. So we'll be split into smaller groups, which give us the opportunity to really discuss those issues. The first issue being museology and capacity building, and then we will come back into plenary, and then we will go back again into where, where we will feed back the discussions. Then we will have the second chat room session on funding. So I think we will have some very interesting discussions today. Um, and uh, I would like to welcome um, Mian uh, Atik Ahmad. And uh, we would be very pleased um, to hear your, um, your thoughts um, on museology and capacity building and funding in, in the South Asia region. And if everyone, please, can you put your um, your phone or your uh, laptop on mute so that uh, we don't have any interruption um, when Mian Atik Ahmad is uh, speaking. So over to you, um, Mian Atik Ahmad. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much. I am, I'm sure everyone is listening to me. Uh, there will be no problem in communication. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, this is 20 minute talk and uh, I have shared uh, my talk with my President Museum Association. 10 to 12 minutes I will speak and uh, 5 to 7 minutes my President Brigadier Nansri will be discussing uh, on some important issues. Actually, the question is now why we are together here, what we are looking for, future of museum and museology in South Asia? If yes, uh, museology and uh, funding for capacity building. It's a good idea to establish South Asia Museum Directors Forum for many acceptable reasons and uh, to look into the two points. We are neighboring countries, Afghanistan, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Nepal, Sri Lanka. Historically, uh, we are connected in the same timeline of history. Some history of uh, setting museum in this region is same like India, Pakistan, Afghanistan, uh, Sri Lanka. So we have the same timeline of establishing museums. But there are two things, buts and ifs. What we are, we are the objectives to achieve through this uh, South Asian Directors Forum. Number one, uh, what we have to achieve uh, country-wise and overall, uh, in a South Asia region. Uh, in the past, we have three P's uh, working on museology. Uh, 
procurement preservation and presentation but now uh, uh, i came to know through curating tomorrow.co.uk that there are five uh, uh, P's now uh, working for the museology or museum field is um, people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership. You know, uh, the in terminology has been entirely changed from three P's to five P's. This is very good. These points and these, these uh, very useful for museums and museology of the day. But old terms versus new terms on museums and museology in South Asian countries. Have everyone uh, been introduced uh, by these terms? And if the terms have been introduced, what kind of capacity building uh, was introduced by the responsible people uh, like museum association, like government, like ICOM, uh, 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 national committees and uh, and the ministries, the government ministries who are relevant to establishing museums. Some of few points I would like to share best to achieve by South Asian museums. Number one, which I think is, uh, is lobbying for funding and funding for what? No, we have these questions. Lobbying for... lobbying for funding and funding for what? Either museums, managers are weak in lobbying and seeking point. Actually, in European countries, they, are, they have very strong lobbying services for their museums. But in our Asian countries, South Asian countries, uh, my study is that uh, this, uh, maybe museum professionals are not uh, quite ready to ask government officers, officials, ministries to uh, provide funding uh, for this. The second one is uh, the, uh, the funding is, is, is the issue for government. Either government is ready to provide funds for uh, uh, museums or not. Like Pakistan is always funded by the government, but only the management, uh, not by the programming. Then we need to work on the following, uh, on following basis. If the South Asia Director Forum is active and uh, we can do uh, a joint working, uh, we need to develop a joint working group for research on issues on regular basis, not uh, as a time uh, on the basis of temporary uh, arrangements. But if, uh, this, uh, this forum must be active in uh, joint research uh, in all six countries to introduce literature-based museology. The second issue is that uh, if we have to resolve the issue, the understanding of uh, uh, museums and museology in South Asia, uh, we need to uh, introduce literature-based museology. And uh, literature-based museology will create uh, as understanding uh, to the ministries, to the people, to the so everyone will be uh, accepting this uh, idea. I think we need to work on, on this idea. And uh, we need to, uh, we must provide some training uh, for the museum directors and professionals uh, that how to uh, uh, create lobbying services for uh, their museums. This is a special uh, you know, kind of training. And uh, if this, uh, this group is ready to, uh, do some researches on these topics, then we can find some uh, solutions for this. And training of uh, museum professionals in all uh, aspects of physiology. These are technical uh, things like lighting, light, uh, art and design and graphics and we have presentation. But until and unless we have a story to tell or we just need to uh, what is happening in the past that we need to just uh, put our artifacts in uh, showcases. Everyone, uh, uh, I did research on this, uh, that a person who uh, who is visiting museum, he said that I saw the horror museum 20 years ago. And I after 20 years, I did not find any attraction for museums. 
So this is one of the strong issue that everyone in South Asian country must have a reason to go to the museum. In a training and collaboration, when introducing new terms and definitions. My submission is to, uh, to all my European colleagues and friends, museologists, that when you are introducing some terms and uh, uh, terms of museology, new terms of museology in Europe, just uh, uh, if you are transferring this, uh, these terms, then, uh, then must be some training sessions and coordination sessions between these uh, forums and uh, the creators of the new terms. And accordingly, we have to train our people so to understand and uh, implementation of uh, that term and uh, uh, things of history. Enhance the working of museum association. But the other thing is very important that in Pakistan, uh, the museum association was established in 1949. Then in 1971, uh, defunct, and uh, in 2013, I, I and my colleagues uh, re-established Museum Association of Pakistan. We are working hard, and we organized five to six uh, conferences, and now we are preparing a document for uh, national policy on museums. And Collaboration between the ICOM national committees and relevant ICOM international committees. Because the, it's a matter of understanding. Uh, the material which is being produced in Europe and uh, the trans, in my uh, opinion, these materials must be translated into the local languages. Uh, today is a digital age of digital, uh, you know, uh, everything we can uh, translate and we can send translated uh, scripts to the people so that might be they, they are not able to understand the other languages and they can understand their local languages. So UNESCO is already, uh, they have one or two uh, uh, Urdu translated books in, uh, in Pakistan. And support and funding from them, uh, I mean, the international agencies, uh, the relevant agencies must have a, a working uh, plan for, uh, for South Asia. No doubt we can uh, support, also uh, provide some support, local support from the government, from other agencies uh, regarding funding for the trainings and uh, uh, these kind of activities, research. And so uh, I may like to request my president, Museum Association, uh, Dr. Adnan Srim, to have five to six minute uh, discussion on his point. Brigadier Adnan. Is he in? Uh... Yes. Uh, am I audible? Uh, uh, yes. Please continue. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good good afternoon from Pakistan. As for the Pakistan time is concerned, to all the participants, uh, for just few words about my introduction, I joined army in nineteen eighty six and uh, as an infantry officer, but uh, to my good luck, in 2009, I was selected and handpicked uh, to make Army Museum Rawalpindi. And uh, in last 15 years, first I made Army Museum Rawalpindi, and uh, then I made Army Museum Lahore, and now I am doing the director as well. In between, I was given assignment to develop more display corners. Hello. Um, Victoria, could you unmute Adnan Salim, please? Thank you. Yes, uh, he has to do it. I cannot do it. I uh, here we go. He... Sorry, we seem to have a, a. Ah, okay, there we are. You're you're unmuted now, Adnan Salim. Thank you. Please, please continue, Mr. Salim. Okay. Uh, then I made four displays in uh, four displays in Kazakhstan. I think some disturbances there. Uh, 
Yes, am I heardable? Okay. Uh, then I made four display museum at four museums in Kazakhstan, and then I have the honor uh, to establish the museum on railway train and uh, which traveled throughout the Pakistan on our Independence Day in 2014. So this is just the short, you know, efforts which I've done in the uh, field of museology. Now coming towards the topic, the, uh, first of all, I'll appreciate ICOM authorities uh, to, do, uh, to, you know, establish this and start this uh, South Asian Forum. And I think uh, this is the best thing which can be done in the field of museum in South Asia, uh, because most of the countries sharing same historical timeline in the South Asia. And uh, because India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and even Iran and the other uh, countries, we are sharing common artifacts. We are uh, sharing common train, traditions, and culture, and then the history as well. Even military heritage, I think it's common till 1947 uh, of all these, most of the South Asian countries. So uh, I, I'm not sure that whether all these countries are facing the same problem as Pakistan is facing in the field of museology. But in the next, when I'm talking the issues which are being faced by the Pakistan, I'm not sure whether these issues are being faced other countries as well or not. So while explaining the issues, uh, I, are, I'm, I don't feel proud, uh, frankly speaking, being very realistic that we are far, far behind in this museology in Pakistan. And uh, the basic problem which we have in Pakistan, that is our one constitutional problem where they have uh, placed the museum not in the federal government, rather they have uh, you know, placed the museum in the provincial government subject. It is not centralized. So when it is not centralized, there's a lot of problems which arise you know, from there and uh, we cannot do anything centrally to project Pakistan, to preserve Pakistan or history or culture or things. So it is being done at the provincial level. So this is the basic constitutional problem in Pakistan. Then lack of cohesion, uh, again, the linked problem with the constitution, uh, there's no cohesion between our provinces and people they are doing work in their own directions. There's no one direction which is at national level. And another, you know, sad thing, very less priority is given to the museums in Pakistan at national level, uh, at government level. Uh, we have never given the priority to the museums to preserve the history. And uh, uh, this is our bad luck, you can say, very talented people in this field, but at, there's no patronage at government level where we can, uh, you know, uh, work freely and uh, to for the physiology. So uh, these are the basic issues which are being faced uh, at national level. And the current situation, you can say, of physiology in Pakistan, that, as I said, the museums are being dealt by the departments or at individual level. Department, when I say, let's say army, I have, we have made two museums. Now there's no problem in funding as far as the army museum is concerned. So I have developed the museums, you can say the international standard. Uh, very good thematic museums. I have developed this army museum Lahore, army museum Rawalpindi. So at par with any of, any of the best museum of China, Turkey, or even London, or even Australia, War Memorial. So at par to that museums. But the other departments, which lack funding, so they could not develop their museum uh, and should have been developed. And even the people at individual level, they do their efforts, but because of the financing, because of the place, because of the other related issues, so they are unable to project or they are unable to do what they want to do. Then uh, this another problem is the capacity building because it is again linked with 
the you can say the patronage because there's no patronage strong patronage from government side so the capacity building again is lacking uh, people they are not uh, doing any courses they are not current about the latest techniques uh, how to make the museum how to develop the museum how to maintain the museum so uh, this again problem is being faced by the people and uh, uh, funding there is no pro uh, you know another problem at it is again uh, you can say the on individual whims if some departmental museum some head of the department he takes interest in the museum there is no problem museum will work suppose some per, uh, person is changed and museum is not in the priority so museum will go down so this is not the constant factor uh, that museum is running you know automatically it is not like this in certain cases so it depends then lack of exchange of artifacts and the ideas and the expertise between the museum and that root cause again the same because issue is not being dealt at national level so there is no exchange of ideas expertise and the experts uh, in between the museums so this is another sore point because there is no central body who is dealing and controlling everything. Uh, museum association, which is you know being made, and uh, I am doing as the president, and Nia Atik Saab is doing. So we are in fact uh, have volunteered ourselves, being you know for the last fifteen years I am involved in making the museum. Now we are trying hard to assist the people uh, in this, you know, the field that, first of all, to develop the museums, to develop the themes, to preserve the articles, even in the restoration, preservation, even the digitalization. So all these things which I've done, so uh, uh, we are uh, doing, but again, the constraints are there, financial and the other constraint do come in, but where the financial constraints are not there, then I think uh, there's, there's no problem in our working. So keeping all what I've said, uh, the way forward, which I feel, uh, because uh, if I don't know, we will discuss further into the next meetings that how we can influence the government to make this issue the central one at federal level. And then we need the patronage as it is being given from the ICOM as well. Uh, because if patronage is there, so then certainly I think we are going to do something in the field of this museology and we are all to you know, cover up the problems and the basic problems which we are facing in this field. And uh, then uh, we need assistance as well as far as the capacity building is concerned uh, to maintain and to upkeep for the museum which are already there. So thank you very much from my side. Thank you very much, um, Mr. Salim um, and um, Mr. Ahmad for really presenting some of the deep issues that the whole region is facing. Um, I think it's not just Pakistan that has um, these issues with how museums are governed at different levels, um, how they are funded. But I do think that both of you have highlighted how important it is that we talk together about these things and that perhaps with this, we do get the exchange of ideas um, that Mr. Salim was talking about and the capacity building um, that Mr. Ahmad was talking about. So talking of exchanging ideas, we now have a chance to go into smaller groups. You will be, you will be just um, whizzed into a smaller group where we can actually hear some of the thoughts that you have. Um, before we do that, perhaps if there is anybody who has any particular, uh, who would like to just um, respond at, at all, um, please just either put your hand up or unmute yourself. And, and uh, if you would like to make any comments to um, the very valid points that both our keynote speakers have made. And remember to unmute yourself before you speak.
Okay, I think we we will uh, we will if there is no one who who wants to speak directly, then we will go into the smaller groups where we can um, discuss. Um, so this first breakout uh, is going to be on museology and capacity building. Um, so Victoria, could you put us all into um, breakout rooms and Americo will moderate one, I will moderate the other and Hussein uh, to moderate the third one. Yes, Thank of course, you, Victoria. Yes, yes, here we go.
So we think that. I know we've we've come back into the plenary. It, it all happens very suddenly. <laughs> Sometimes people are speaking in the middle of it, and then suddenly you <laughs> find yourself back in the whole big group. Um, but that's lovely that we're all together again. Um, so uh, we'll now hear from the three moderators. Just give us um, a few minutes of an overview of the discussions that you had in your um, in your small group uh, so mr hussein would you like to start with with your group just to a, a, a summary of the discussion okay thank you very much for giving me the chance and once again uh, good evening from bangladesh it is now in evening in the bangladesh and we have discussed about the mesology and capacity building and uh, Mr. Bijay Shai from Nepal, Mr. Puti Ghosh from India, um, Gandhi Memorial Museum, and Sikdar Julkarnayan from Bangladesh, Jahanginagar University, and Punam Choudhury from Kashmir University, and Shurubala from Manipur uh, participated in the discussion. And in uh, summary, we can say that all, all museums are facing the same problem they had no the museology expert in india they said that they have the museology courses but uh, in different university they have they have no common syllabus though so sometimes some museums are facing the problem for recruiting the proper person and they suggested uh, the um, uh, for common syllabus and Training and they should they should take care of uh, when they will uh, the recruit the museum professional personnel. They should take care of the course and the studies they the candidates taken the students and they should uh, prefer the museology course student and uh, in, uh, in from uh, Nepal, Mr. Vijay Shahi said that uh, they, uh, in the constitution they have uh, the law, but uh, in the constitution they mentioned the, about the um, uh, cultural properties, but they have no uh, lack, uh, lacking of law. So in different museum, in, they run in different way. And this has said that there should be a common um, uh, training center for museology for cap capacity building. And uh, in uh, we in uh, we have in Bangladesh, Professor Zulkarnain said that the, the uh, there should be a training uh, training center for museum professionals, and uh, he, he mentioned that the museology uh, uh, student from the trained in the archaeology department they should be recruited in the museums. And uh, if, uh, some museums are facing that the book rate are interfering their administration and museum professionals should be given preference uh, for their decision making. And uh, Ms. Shurubala said that the, the Monipuri, they faces the same recruitment problem, the proper man and uh, they, she, she uh, recommended that they we, um, they uh, they should be uh, uh, recruitment board should take care of it, and I in my opinion that uh, uh, in the South Asia, especially um, Pakistan, India, Nepal, Sri Lanka, Bangladesh are facing the same problem in museology and in capacity building, and uh, uh, actually. Uh, in our Bangladesh, the museum personnel or directors of museums are not uh, empowered as the uh, decision making. They had to some uh, uh, accept uh, exceptional in in the private sector, but uh, private museums. But in government museums, they have to uh, face some problem for making decision. And uh, no common law in Bangladesh for museums. So, and no uh, common mm -hmm. majority training center. So, uh, uh, in my observation, that uh, same problem is facing in South in Asia. So, we should take care of it. And from the intercom, we can uh, take the necessary step uh, improvement of the major, major and capacity building. 
Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Hussein. That was a, a very useful summary um, of some very common issues um, that came up in my group as well. Americo, would you like to uh, just do a quick feedback on your group? Yes, and, and please, uh, if if the rest can mute, if not, the noise can mute. Uh, maybe Ashley, uh, must, yes, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, well, I think very much of what uh, uh, our colleague just said came up at my group as well. Uh, what was interesting to listen was uh, the representative, the representative from Sri Lanka. Uh, who works not at a museum, but at a, a, as an educator, said all the program that there is uh, for capacity building available apparently, which is more focused on the um, transmission of traditional culture into new generations and communication. And uh, so there is a venue there in Sri Lanka that maybe can be studied further to see how people can have access to that uh, alternative of, of, of learning. But mostly the problem, uh, like in small museums in Nepal, as explained by Davadi Ramesh Prasad, is that uh, there is no really uh, particular uh, particular studies that can be applied directly to museums. The idea of, that the country thinks of uh, museums as simply uh, a place of research for archaeologists. So like, like the main theme is archaeology as a science, and then museums uh, are not really thought as, uh, as, as, a, as a platform, as a social platform of a different kind. Um, and mostly like at that museum in Nepal, which is a, a community museum, which normally has to serve the stakeholders. Um, so I think uh, it is important to notice it is a question of governance, which I think is a, is a best, best is a is a first problem uh, the region has, like. There is no autonomy in decision making. They are dependent and mostly in uh, in public uh, museums, which are uh, the majority. They are all the decisions are taken from up at another level of government and not within the museum itself. So I think that would be found as a first problem to to. In, to be able to do capacity building and taking decisions, I think the government issue is number one. Yes, and I think that links back um, very strongly to what um, Yen Atik Ahmed was, was talking about with regards to difficulty of museum directors that they, that they don't have the capacity to lobby government. The, the communications between the museum directors and the government are, are one way from government to directors and not from directors to government. So um, perhaps that is something that we can look at um, in future discussions that we have and, and future capacity building. Um, just very quickly, we had a very lively discussion. Um, uh, we um, uh, as Mita from the Terragore Museum in Nepal um, talks about the, um, uh, the lack of capacity building. Uh, she has just come back from having done an MA in London. Um, so um, she is, is really, um, she's pleased that the Terragore Museum um, in Nepal does provide opportunities for, for museum directors, or well, museum professionals. So that's where we can start. You as museum directors um, are directors of your museums and within the museum there are skills that you could share amongst each other. So that's a possibility. Um, Muminur Rashid from the Museum of Science and Technology in Bangladesh um, was talking about the fact that in Bangladesh there is no institution, there's no university that teaches museology. Um, so that is, uh, that is an issue. Um, 
So it's not available in Bangladesh. So what could we do about that? It makes it difficult to develop careers in, in museums um, if there isn't any, um, any training specifically for museums. And many of the other themes um, were, were the same, talking about the fact that it's archaeology. It, that's the university um, uh, study. Um, and then people have to learn about museums when they go and work in a museum as an archaeologist. But that perhaps we could look at some of the archaeology courses, existing ones in museums in South Asia, and how they could introduce some strands of museology within the archaeology um, curriculum. Um, so that's one thing. And then uh, we heard from Zubair Rabani uh, from Pakistan um, talking about the fact that it's quite often it's international people who come to do the training um, rather than homegrown training because there are no uni university courses. Um, Antisham Aziz uh, from the Lahore Museum in Pakistan um, was, uh, was pleased that we have this forum as, and I think that's a very good starting point. And he, he talked about the fact that um, they, the museums get their art history or archaeology students into the museum, and then they have to train them uh, in museology. So actually, it's the museums training the museology themselves, rather than it being a formal education and a formal qualification. Um, we talked about the impossibility of loaning objects even between provinces. Um, because there's no policy, there's no documentation, it's very difficult to do it on, on more than just a very short-term basis. Um, and then, um, uh, so I think that is, um, I think that's, that's all, we, um, all we had, um, but some very interesting discussions. Um, so now we will go into the second um, breakout rooms, which are, um, so there's the theme that we're discussing now is funding. And what would be really useful is if we, if, if we try and focus not on lack of funding, but on, on what we can, how we can try and unlock some funding, because we all know that museums all over the world are having problems with funding. Um, so let's talk about it in what we can do rather than what we can't do. So let's see how we go with that. So Victoria, could you put us into our breakout rooms, please? Yes, of course, Lizzie. Thank you. knows who is the moderator who is going to moderate oh hello <laughs> is it regarding funding i think we are cut off i don't know i don't know who is the uh, moderator I think, I think you, this is the regarding are you going to moderate no no yeah, because no, no. i'm all okay. it seems a, 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 a no? 15 minutes break to funding 
No murder at all? Yeah. Maybe type of uh, this group organization. Can 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 you hear me? Yes, Jubair. Yes, I am. I I, I can hear. But who is the moderator? Moderator, there is no moderator, <laughs> no participant, small, small groups. <laughs> Ask my friend to say, sorry, yeah. Is there anybody? Hello? Yes, hello. Yeah, Asma Ferdosi. Is it Asma Ferdosi? Sorry, I don't understand. Who is the moderator here? Do you know? You should. No, no. You are invited to join room three. You have to click to join in order to access to the room. Room three? Yes. Sleep. Hello, Subisar. Yes, Asma, where to go? How yes. to go? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> there is no option. We no want option. to discuss about the funding. Leave meeting. I have got one <laughs> option, leave meeting. That's how I hardly join this type of meeting. There is no option. I think uh, this is uh, join. wrong. Uh, now, it, now it says join. Uh, uh room two not now oh option is there yes Why? you can join to room two now please
Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, we got we got cut yeah. off. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we... if there is some of tax <clears throat> uh people donate money to the uh, museum, and if they can get some tax exemption for that, that will be uh, encouraging for the people to to uh, to put money to the museum. Yeah. I think that's a very good, a very good point. Um, so welcome back, everybody. I hope those discussions were were interesting, and um, we had some useful ones. Um, but let's hear first from um, uh, Jahangir Hussain. Um, could you tell us the discussion in your group? Thank you very much. And again, we ma uh, made and uh, this time. Uh, I I have three new members in my group on Mr. Shirazul Islam from Bangladesh and Mr. Jubai Rabbani from Pakistan and Morsuruti Das from India. And we uh, dis discussed about the finding problem in res their respective countries and museums. And, uh, uh, as we discussed, and uh, I found that uh, Ms. Uh, Professor Punam Chaudhuri, she said that uh, they have no comprehensive policy for funding. Eh? And uh, she suggested that there should be a turning uh, for generating fund, how to, the museum people can generate their funds. Uh, and Mr. Bijay Shahi pointed out that they, Mm, uh, their, uh, their fund allocation is not uh, judiciously, and mm, he suggested that the government should allocate the fund judiciously, and autonomous museum uh, should uh, get the chance to, for gener generating their own fund. And uh, Ms. Shurubala from Manipur, uh, she said that they received the fund for library and museum together, and she has fund, but he can't spend properly without the concurrence of the any uh, top person from the authority. So she, she has no authority for proper um, utilization of fund. And the, she said that there should be a guideline, a common guideline for utilization of fund. And Mr. Jubair Rabbani from Pakistan, she. Mm, he said that uh, should uh, government should focus the uh, focus that own uh, for the autonomy of the museum that uh, they get the fund and fund should be um, uh, allocated judiciously and uh, judiciously. And Mr. Shirazul Islam from Bangladesh, mm, he said that um, uh, they identify uh, the Bangladesh National Museum has identified. Uh, eight sectors for funding, but he said that the museum uh, getting fund that the um, uh, on from government and uh, second is own fund and third is from the donation, um, the donation. And the private museums are run by their own and uh, sometimes they face some uh, uh, one want of funds they can't run properly, and uh, Miss Morsruti Das from India, he um, po she pointed out on interesting uh, thing that uh, she mentioned that some museums in India are going to be closed for lack of fund, and she especially uh, mentioned one museum, Guru Shadai Museum of India. Uh, has been closed due to lack of fund. Mm, so we suggested that there's, there should be a collaborative uh, program for uh, taking care of the heritage and museums which are going to be closed. So uh, I, I think that uh, this is the time that the intercom, ICOM intercom can take initiative uh, in, uh, in this regard. And, and finally, I would like to say that the 
uh, again the same i found the same problem uh, almost same problem of funding and in the south asian museums uh, um, museum so uh, we can uh, the intercom is the common form we can suggest uh, how um, can uh, solve is the problem for generating fund and for uh, we can uh, in the training courses we can also introduce and we can request the all countries museums and uh, universities to introduce their uh, course the for generate how how can the museum people can generate their fund and thank you very much. This is uh, end of my from my end. This is the all. This all. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hussein. Very, very much appreciated. Um, that's a, a useful over, overview. And Americo, what what other discussions did you have? Well, we we had um, a nice discussion. Uh, of course, uh, with all the limitations of funds, which is. Uh, which were used to actually, uh, I, I asked people to talk about how they survive more than how they work uh, with, with so little funds. And uh, it, the first one was Asumita from Nepal. And uh, one of the things is, even if she is no expert in fundraising, um, she finds out that all people in the museum should have uh, some um, knowledge about what it means to fundraise and from the beginning, that is where to begin uh, the process of fundraisers, how to apply, uh, saying that there are no uh, pro professionals in doing that. So that is uh, an ability that uh, is a concern. Uh, first of all, how to write the right proposals because we all know there are funds uh, in the world which are available, and but they need particular proposals and the skills to write those proposals. And uh, uh, Museum Rashid from Bangladesh, the, what, she sa what he says is uh, complains about the restrictions there are to do fundraising on account of uh, that they are um, public institutions and uh, they are not well seen as uh, uh, looking for funds being, being public themselves. And uh, may I suggest that that's a common uh, problem all over the planet uh, with museums. Some of them have trying to solve it through um, doing friends of the museums, associations, which are the ones who do the fundraising, uh, which is a dangerous path many times because friends of the museums, as they own the money, they want to own the direction of the museum as well. So it's a, it's a tricky way of trying to, to solve the problem. But uh, there are other institutional ways of trying to do uh, public-private institutions, some, mix, uh, some mixed uh, administrations, which may allow doing the fundraising in public institutions. Then um, Adrian Salem, uh, even if at, at his museum, uh, he has no problem in fundraising because he gets plenty of funds. He says he's a member and director of the Museum Association. And there uh, he notices the, the real lack of funds and the necessity to do fundraising. And, uh, and he divides it, the problem in two. One is the maintenance of the building, which is number one. It says all the administrative support they need from government to go on uh, working. And, uh, and then there is a second step, which is the funding, which allows them to actually uh, do their mission and, and act uh, in, a, in, a, in a good manner uh, according to their vision. So uh, the, he finds that the first one is very important because maintenance, uh, salaries, uh, because all uh, collections, that's, that's a, a very important and high priority in museums.
but the second one as well needs much attention. Finally, Rina Dewan uh, from India, um, she says that what is important is what are the methods to engage people. If they're able to engage the people in the, in the mission of the museum uh, by way of, uh, uh, of having them participate closely in the mission of the museum, it is easier to, for the ticketing, for getting money to get them to collaborate. Um, so there are some problems that must be tackled by the museum itself and not expect government or, or funds uh, from elsewhere to help them go through their mission. So this is, in a word, uh, some of the interesting discussions we had at our session. Thank you very much, uh, Americo. Um, much of what uh, you and um, Jahangir Hussain have said uh, uh, was also very much reported in, in my group. Um, so, um, Sikhra Zulkanin from Bangladesh. Um, he's from the Liberation War Museum in, um, in Bangladesh. And he, he highlighted that because the theme of the museum is emotionally connected to the people, they actually do get um, contributions from the public. And that has been very, very useful for them. So I think there's a message in that. reporting from his group if you can if you can make the museum message something which people want to support then they will support it and perhaps when it's something about you know the liberation war and things it, that's that's a really powerful message that people can get behind maybe it's a bit more difficult with archaeology <laughs> um so we then heard from the gandhi memorial museum in barakpur um, and again, that has, you know, similarly, it has a very um, emotive theme um, with the, the um, with, um, interest in Mahatma Gandhi. Um, and they publish books on the freedom movement um, and, and so on. Um, the, the difficulty is, um, you know, having to register with the government CSR platform, the corporate social responsibility platform. Um, and later on, we had a discussion around the fact that in the program for getting corporate funding, um, you know, generally the Nepali companies will give to health and education and not to museums. And again, that perhaps is because of the message of the museum that we need to perhaps get the message um, more, more strongly across. And that that's, is the responsibility of the directors to do that um, in many ways. Um, and then we heard um, from a small community uh, museum um, where there's very little funding at all um, and people don't want to visit, visit the museum. Um, uh, even the museum directors um, and museum professionals working there are not taking salaries. Um, the museum itself is within a World Heritage site, so visitors pay to get into the site and they don't want to pay again to get into the museum. So the museum can't even generate its own funds from, from tickets. So that was what uh, Ramesh Prasad Dawadi was, was talking about. And then finally, we heard from uh, Asma Ferduzi from the Bangladesh National Museum, which is under the Ministry of Culture. It's a large museum in Dhaka with 45 galleries. Um, and again, the government funding is not, not enough for the museum. So they can't collect um, new objects. Um, the renovation of the building is, is under threat as well. Um, and uh, other points brought up in our group was that there are no tax exemptions for donations. Um, so that again is something that would require lobbying So and would require lobbying on behalf of museum directors in South Asia to, to do something about that with their governments. Um, so I'm aware that we are very close to the end of our time together today. I am very grateful to all of you for participating. I think we should think about what we do next. This has been a really interesting discussion. So um, 
uh, we will work with uh, Rina Devan from uh, the Kolkata Center of Creativity and with Americo Castilla and Victoria from Fundacion Tipa. Um, we will have a think about what we do next. And I think it might take something like the form of some smaller workshops where we can start to really discuss what we can do about these issues. This has been very useful to raise the issues. The next step is what we can do about them. Um, so thank you very much for attending. Um, on behalf of ICOM and Intercom, we will do what we can to create a forum where you can take, take on some of these issues um, yourselves. Um, so thank you very much for, um, for, for being with us today. Um, and we will, through Rina, we will be in touch with regards to future developments. I don't know, America, like whether to... you want to say Thank you very more. much. Thank well, you. Thank you. Bye. Thank, you. Bye -bye. thank you very thank much you. for thank arranging you. such yeah. excellent seminar. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lizzie. Thank you, Lizzie, for your support. Yeah. Thank, you. Uh, thank you. Bye. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks again. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.